when I left high school, I didn't expect that I was going to be a brother. Uh, I didn't expect, um, you know, I thought I'd be married and, and so on. But, you know, one thing led to another. And it was opportunities through my college years and, and shortly after that um, allowed me to work with the brothers and uh, continue to be connected to the brothers that really, you know, just opened my eyes. You know what, maybe this is something I could do. I didn't know about the Marish brothers until I came here. And just seeing how happy they were being involved with the students' lives, like most of them don't leave at 2 o'clock when school ends. They're here helping us out, uh, teaching us new things, or just talking to us. So it's, a w it's comforting to know that they're people too. I'm always happy every time I visit one of their communities, like here in New York or in Lawrence, Massachusetts, or in a selfless New York. And, um, you know, it just always makes me happy to be around them. And um, when I think of myself as a brother, I, I, like the, I like the image that I get in my mind. And so basically I stick with it because I think it's going to make me happy. I think becoming a brother, um, you know, initially I think maybe some of my family thought, oh, you know, it's like in the old days you went off to the brothers or maybe you went to the missions and you didn't get a chance to be at home as much. Um, I think that's really um, had not, certainly has not been my experience. And I would say for most of the brothers I've known, it's, it's really not their experience either. My brother is Brother Michael Flanagan. He's a campus minister at Marist College in Poughkeepsie. My brother and I have had a close relationship over the years. Um, we talk weekly, I would say like three or four times a week. We see each other for the holidays. All my kids are very close with him also. They look up to him and he's their sponsor for their confirmation. They call him Uncle Michael. And um, you know, they speak to him often as well. My husband and I have eight beautiful children. The oldest is Christopher. Uh, he'll be 24 this year and heading to law school, we believe. Um, next one is Nicholas, he's 21, uh, studying to be a doctor, he'll be taking his MCAT soon. Uh, and then we have Gabriella, our singer, and Victoria, our soccer player. And then we have Joseph, Michael, Dominic, and finally Jana, who's going to be five this year. We're a devout Catholic family, and we teach our kids to, to live their faith. Uh, we teach our kids to prayerfully discern what their steps are in life. And if they felt that they had a call to the brotherhood or to the priesthood or to consecrated life as a, as a nun, then we would support them completely. If it weren't for the Marist Brothers, I literally wouldn't be here today. They've been an incredible support um, in good times and tough times throughout my life. Uh, and they've been an incredible example of how to live. In my current role of working with young people that are interested in us, um, particularly when they're in high school, I, I believe, you know, and I would ask, you know, teachers in their schools, um, you know, to help um, come to um, call some of these young men to think about the possibility of, of joining us. And, um, you know, I think it's pretty clear that um, we would be looking for young men that are people that want to make a difference in this world, people that are, you know, very enthusiastic about um, helping others um, and want to help others and, and be a people of service. I don't think anybody, any group of people, has been as influential, as positive, as kind, as supportive, as energetic, um, as spirit-based as the Maris Brothers. And as a way, if someone was thinking about this as a lifestyle, I, I, it would be tremendously exciting because I know that all the things that I experienced would be able to be continued. Uh, the, the camps and the SOPUS, uh, schools like Malloy that literally shape, change lives. I've had friends who seriously, con who still are seriously considering the priesthood or the religious life or being a sister or, or being a brother, and their parents are very much against it, which seems bizarre because they sent them to Catholic schools and encouraged them to be in, you know, encouraged them to pray and join youth groups, and it seems for, what did you think was going to happen? <laughs> I don't know of any other group that has been as consistently there in my life as the Marist Brothers have. So if a parent came to me with concerns, I would absolutely do everything in my power to kind of assuage those concerns and let them know that this is a great group of people, an incredible group of people. For me, it's about community life. I mean, I think young people today, um, I don't think they're gonna join um, us because of ministry, because they can certainly do ministry, um, you know, and do it very well uh, as a lay person or as a married person. But I think the thing that sets us apart is the opportunity to uh, be part of this wider mission of uh, being Marist um, and uh, with men that really are committed to, to living Champagne's dream and to making that happen in the lives of young people. I think like the end of my sophomore year, I was approached by Brother John to become part of Marist Youth 
and leading on retreats kind of showed me that it could be something I could do because I really liked helping others and that's what the brothers really do. I'm going to go to college and I'm going to live my life for now and if God wants it I guess it'll happen. Right now I'm thinking about, I'm really definitely thinking about entering the Marist after I graduate from my program which is in a year and a half. Um, but in the meantime I'll still be praying about it and thinking about it and just letting it sit and see how it feels and it's, it's been a four year process and it's still not over yet. I believe the sermon is a, a process of coming to really um, listen to what God is, is really calling a person to uh, and how to live their lives that is going to allow them to make the biggest difference they can in the world and to uh, live a life that's fully engaging and fully happy. I would not want anyone to become a Marist brother unless they were going to do it so that they could be a happy and, and fulfilled life. Uh, and for me, that certainly, and for me, the brothers I know and I've lived with and, and continue to, to work and share my life with um, are just really joyful, happy people. And I think, you know, for parents, I think it's, um, you know, it's great, it would be great for them to come to know what the brothers are about and really who they are. Uh, and I think if once, they, once they get to that, that, I think they would see very clearly that it's, it is a life that's filled and, you know, with God's purpose and, and you know, really being able, having the opportunity to be happy. Thank you.